our minds play a substantial role in shaping our perception of sound quality from hi-fi gear. In today's video, we'll explore the cognitive biases and psychological factors that can cloud our judgment and lead us astray. The challenge lies in stepping beyond our mental bubble to truly appreciate sounds as they are. Together, we'll delve into techniques that will help you overcome these biases and enhance your listening experience. Let's get to it. I'm gonna do things a bit differently today. I want to give you all the solution before I dive deep into the problem to help you straight away instead of dilly-dallying. When I first started as an audio reviewer, I occasionally found myself getting caught up in the excitement surrounding a piece of gear, right? Forgetting that my primary role was to be an evaluative listener rather than a casual one. In order to maintain objectivity and provide accurate assessments, I had to train myself to disregard the brand and hype surrounding a product, focusing solely on its sound quality and performance in comparison to other equipment. To achieve this, I adopted several strategies to mitigate the influence of cognitive biases and psychological factors. First, I began conducting blind tests where the identity of the hi-fi gear being tested was concealed, allowing me to concentrate on the sound itself. I also made sure to volume match equipment during these comparisons, as small differences in volume can significantly impact our perception of sound quality. Developing a consistent evaluation methodology was another crucial step. By using a selection of familiar music tracks or test tones that highlighted various aspects of audio performance, I could focus on specific sound characteristics and make more objective comparisons between different pieces of hi-fi gear. Taking notes during my listening sessions proved helpful as well. Documenting my impressions and observations allowed me to articulate and remember specific aspects of the sound facilitating more objective comparisons between components or systems. Acknowledging my own biases and expectations was essential for maintaining objectivity. By reflecting on my preconceptions and any external factors that could affect my perception of sound quality, I was better equipped to counteract their influence. Additionally, I sought diverse opinions by consulting various sources, including reviews, forums, and discussions with other enthusiasts including mentors and stuff like that to gain a broader perspective on different hi-fi gear allowing time for acclimation practicing a b testing and trusting my ears while maintaining a critical mindset also played a significant role in my growth as an audio reviewer by implementing these strategies i was able to reduce the impact of cognitive biases and psychological factors on my evaluations, allowing me to focus on the actual characteristics of the sound produced by Hi-Fi Gear and provide more accurate, unbiased reviews. I just provided you with the solutions on how to mitigate the problem, but what is the problem? You know, our brains can really mess with our opinions on hi-fi gear. This reminds me of a skit a stand-up comedian, Nate Bargatze, did. He said, One part of your brain is smart, and the other part is dumb. You can trick your own brain. That's how dumb the dumb part is. It's in the same head. I thought this was funny because of these cognitive biases and psychological factors that impact how we perceive and evaluate sound quality are in the same head that your reason and objectivity exist. So let me break it down for you with some examples. First, there's the placebo effect. Imagine you get a fancy new audio component and you're convinced it's going to make your music sound amazing. Just because you believe that, your brain might actually trick you into hearing an improvement even if there's no real change in the sound. And the more hype around the product, the stronger this effect can be. Then there's confirmation bias. That's when we focus on the things that support our beliefs and ignore anything that contradicts them. So if you already think a piece of hi-fi gear is top-notch, you might only notice the good parts of the sound and overlook any flaws. Expectation bias is similar to confirmation bias. Basically, if you have high expectations for a product, your brain will process the sound in a way that meets those expectations, even if there's no real difference in quality. Anchoring bias happens when we rely too much on the first piece of information we come across. Like if you hear that something is high-end, you might automatically think it sounds better than it actually does just because of that label. And lastly, there's cognitive dissonance. This is when you feel uncomfortable holding two contradictory beliefs, so you change one to make them align. For example, if you spend a lot of money on audio systems, on your audio components, 
you might convince yourself that it sounds amazing just to justify the expense. So as you can see, our minds can have a huge influence on how we perceive sound quality, even more than our ears sometimes. Being aware of these biases and staying objective can help us make better judgments about hi-fi gear. I don't think we will ever fully understand the influence outside factors can have on not only our purchasing decisions, but our subjective opinions on the products we buy. In the beginning of this video, I laid out a blueprint on how to mitigate these symptoms of the mind. I hope it helps guide you through the discovery of amazing gear and assists you in your journey in hi-fi. If it did, I would love for you to let the like button know who's boss. Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to get notified every time a new video is born. With all that said and done, I will see you on the next one. Take care.